Hey everybody, Bison Post Game Show brought to you by Gate City Bank with Jeff Kolpak and Mike McFeely. I'm Dom Izzo here in Normal, Illinois. North Dakota State now 6-0 on this 2021 season after a 20-0 whitewash of Illinois State where the Bison defense, Jeff, continues to shine in 2021. We talked so much about the lack of takeaways in the spring. The Bison get two big interceptions from Jasir Cox today. Yeah, his first two of his yes. career. You know, they were in... Bryce Jefferson's grill so much that, Man. I mean, he was looking more at NDSU defensive linemen than he was at his own receivers. I mean, look at four of 18. Yep. That's not going to get it done. He was three of eight in the playoff. I mean, his three games against NDSU, the poor guy is just going to be shell shot. Yeah, he's not even got to 15 completed passes yet in the three times he started against no, NDSU. No, and that NDSU's defense just continues to be unbelievable and carry this team in a lot of ways. NDSU's just scored enough points to win games. Doing enough. They win 20 to nothing. You can't beat a team that uh, you know, can't score. Yeah, if you, can't, right. if you don't score, you can't, can't win. win. And so it doesn't really matter how much they score, but this defense just keeps stepping up with a, even with guys injured. Tony Pierce out today. Um, Braden Lipke. Thomas did not play. Lipke Hunter didn't Lipke play. did not play, but the NDSU just keeps on winning ball games. We found a couple new names to add on to the list. Obviously, people know about Eli Mostart. Three sacks for him in the first half. Loshaka Rokes, young man from Wyzetta High School. The Bison coaching staff has been super high on him. From Moved from linebacker to defensive end, and boy, he made a couple plays, too. He did. Javier Derrick got in there, he too. Did. got half a yep. sack. Uh, Barty Ogbu got in yep. the game and, and got some action. But boy, the, just the young defensive lineman that NDSU has, you're seeing what's happening right now. You're also looking a year or two down the mm. road and going, man, they're going to have some yeah. some dudes again next year. they got year. three years left of the most. Yes, yes that's this. the scary yes. part. Yeah, Will and Eli are just, just fantastic defensive linemen for such young guys. Quincy Patterson throws two picks today, both in untimely spots, Jeff, where the Bison will look like they're going in to score touchdowns. What do we make of what number two did today? It's just sort of a struggle, isn't it? And when they get it's inside the red right zone, yep. it's just, um, I don't know if it's a scheme thing or the, the, it's a blocking thing or – you know, UND, they struggled in the red zone. Here, they struggled in the red zone. I mean, you get away with it because, I mean, Jake from State Farm would have had a better chance moving that <laughs> offense than what was going on today. It's just, but at some point. They're going to have to make a play there. You're going to have to, yep. you're well, gonna have to be a little more explosive. The, the, the similarity between the UND game and this game was the that three, both four. teams brought a bunch of pressure yep. off the edge. NDSU couldn't get anything downfield to loosen things up. As Matt Ent said after the game, NDSU's running backs couldn't break any tackles. Yep. And so what it comes down to time and time again for this offense today, as it was at UND, is it's Quincy Patterson running a quarterback draw yeah. or a called run off the right or left side, and that their offense pretty much and, gets reduced to that. Maybe that's where Lipke was a big deal. You definitely he, noticed him not being He was today. the one back at UND yep. that could break tackles, yep. and he was the one guy I think they were missing today. They did get Phoenix Sproles into the game. Phoenix had his first yep. long reception of the season to get that going, but you just wonder how many points they left on the board here today. Well, that's, you know, it's at some point, at some point, they're going to explode against yes. one of these better yep. teams. And uh, Quincy Patterson said when it happens, it yeah. might be a 70 to nothing game once we get everything going. If they can do that against Valley defenses, I don't know. They might not have to if they are only giving up an average of seven points a game. It isn't going to matter. But at some point, you'd like to see them yeah. put up 35, 40 points against a decent Valley team. And then, again, think about the nitpicking here. Yeah, there's they're, tremendous they're, nitpicking, they're, they're, yes. They're, 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 six, they're six and zero. Oh, yes. Their defense yes. can't be scored upon. And I'm griping about yep. that they can't score enough points. Yep. It doesn't matter. They're six and zero. Oh. Well, off of that point, where does Illinois State go from here? Oh, boy. Uh, the portal. The portal. For, that's exactly what I was thinking for a quarterback. Yep. Uh, I feel bad for, you know, Brock Spack's been around a long time, and he's a defensive guy. What do you do if you're him? I mean, they had no chance of scoring. I, I'm really surprised they did not go to Waring earlier in the I game. Too. That then they went back me. to Jackson. Right. Or Jefferson. There's Jefferson in I the mean, game. It, it, yeah, where do they go? They, they need to hit the portal. They need to find some playmakers. They need to find a quarterback. Running backs are eh, nothing yep. great. I mean, the days of Trey Roberson and Marshawn Coppridge are so James far Robinson, gone. Yeah. James Robinson, James Robinson, that was just recently. Yeah. And it feels like it was five years ago. South Dakota State got back to its winning ways with an impressive win today at Western Illinois. Yep. We're going to see Missouri State next week. This has forever been a rubber stamp Bison win. Yep. I don't think that's the case when we're going to see Bobby Petrino's team in there next week. I don't think so, but it's at the Fargo Dome. Yep. That's a huge advantage for NDSU. Talking about transfers. It's uh, yes, Petrino's about 35 team. transfers. Yeah. Um, they struggled a couple of games this year. They lost at Youngstown State. I sense that they might be a little up and down yeah. at, with so many transfers and, and just the way that their program is. 
but Petrina will have them ready for NDSU. It's gonna be it'll be a fun game. It'll be they have some skill. They have some yes. dudes at Missouri Jason State. Jason Shelley is one fun to watch, their quarterback yep. transfer that comes in at Missouri State. So a game that perennially has been looked over on the schedule should not be the case next week when we're back at the dome. For Mike McFeely, Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. That's the Bison Post Game Show brought to you by Gate City Bank.